my name is Paul and here I'm making another video about the world transition that we're going through and today I'm going to talk about a bit more about the trend lines that we're seeing here in the last video I made I expressed the fact that it's really hard to predict anything in a moment or a particular time or whatever but there are possibilities that we can look at in a general sense and see trends and then you pick some of the bigger issues and see what the trend line they're on there are smaller issues you might say and pockets of confusion and so on but there are some really major things that are going on and some of them may or may not be thought about by a lot of people who might be watching this so i'm going to go into a little bit about that again um, i've been looking into this stuff for a long long time way back in the 70s uh, we used to sit around in the cafeteria and talk about the end of the world and prophecies and all that kind of stuff and it was fun but here we are a long time later and there's a whole lot of stuff that's been hitting the fan lately so i want to get into like a little bit about <clears throat> what i believe are maybe the trends that we ought to kind of watch out for and then you can make up in your own mind and think about the consequences of some of these things and kind of figure them out for yourself here <clears throat> now i made a little bit of a list here but I got on here the monetary system, storms and quakes, shipping issues, civil unrest around the world. There's a lot of that going on. Confusion and fear. There's a ton of that going on. Tyranny regarding meds. I mean, it's getting really crazy how they want to restrict your movements and everything. And I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you can kind of follow that line for yourself and figure that out. But that isn't going in a nice way. <clears throat> Revelation of, cons of corruption, the fact that the media now, nobody trusts the media and alternative media is coming out and there, there's all different sources now that a lot of this corruption is being revealed and it's, it's deep and wide and it goes into many countries and, you know, there's people who are in this country, politicians, that they're not loyal to this country at all. They're loyal to maybe China or Ukraine or whatever, but, uh, you know, I don't want to get into that too much right now. Censorship is a big, big issue. If we don't have the information that we need to make decisions in our life, that's a serious problem, including where the best medicines are, or what you can, how you take care of your health, and all kinds of really important information, including what's going on astronomically in the solar system. <laughs> There's the stuff, uh, I'll talk about that in some of the other videos, but uh, travel issues. <clears throat> Look for travel issues. The fact that you can see the trend line here when people with mis restricted movements and then there's people who say well i'm not going to go on a plane for example i'm not going to get on a plane i don't i'm not going to i mean i have a little airplane but it only goes locally i'm not going to get on a commercial plane until they stop with this mandate stuff because there's no reason that i need that right now <clears throat> two years i've been here i don't wear a mask i do my life normally i socialize a little bit i'm i spend a lot of time alone and with small groups of people or I go shopping and whatever, I conduct business, I'm a realtor, so I'm 69 years old and still going good, so whatever that thing is out there, <laughs> so far I'm not worried about at the moment, you know. Now, I want to talk a little bit about larger issues that, as a previous video I made, it talked about like how in aviation or in any kind of thing that one problem leads to another problem and that compounds a problem and then you get three or four of those kind of things and now you're in a real major disaster here <clears throat> and when storms hit the coast i mean anywhere along the coastline i suggest people i mean really think about this for a minute here near the coast has just got so many possible problems you know depending some of them are better than others and if you're going to be near the coast at least be you know a little bit higher elevation now the medical thing that's going on right now you can see how it's affecting a lot of the shipping and transportation and a lot of businesses depend on that and if you go to the show stores lately you'll see that there's a lot of stuff empty shelves and so on and I mean, do the math. That's what I feel. I mean, 
<clears throat> prices get a little higher. But there are alternatives, and I keep suggesting people, look, live a little simpler. There's a lot of stuff in life. I'm a realtor. I go look at a lot of houses, and some of the houses you go look at, like, wow, you can hardly move inside the house. <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's one thing. And then the other thing is that, wow, it's really big and complicated and expensive to maintain and <clears throat> located in a cul-de-sac where you can't get out in case of an emergency and stuff like that. So... Those are some of the big issues. Now, <clears throat> astronomically, there are some things that we might want to consider. You know, every once in a while you hear in the news <clears throat> that they just found this asteroid and whoops, it slipped by the Earth at 25,000 miles away or 100,000 miles away. Or, well, we've missed that one. So <laughs> lucky us. But there are there is debris out in the solar system for sure. <clears throat> and it comes our way. And there's lots of marks on the Earth that prove that it does. So that's kind of an off-the-wall type of possibility, but <clears throat> it could happen. Some of these really large earthquakes like um, Krakatoa and Mount Tobo, Tuba in, in Hawaii and uh, all around the world, there's lots of places where these big massive earthquakes can happen, including in Iceland and so on. And There was one in, I think it was 1893, Krakatoa, somewhere around there, 1895. And they had, like, it blew ash that circulated around the world. I mean, they had a short, really short summer in, in North America because of that. One event. And if that happened today, the population is so much larger, it affects a lot of people. Now, these are the kind of things that, you know, if they happen, I mean, you know, a lot of people are just not going to make it and you know those people who want to go and try to live up way up in the mountains they're, you know fine I mean they may make it but you know the odds of that happening are a little bit smaller you know you might say but what really can happen is power outages because a storm and a power outage I mean we all know I mean it can happen for days and weeks and solar events and solar flares from the can get into our atmosphere and onto the earth and blast out electronic equipment, knock out satellites and things like that. So those are real possibilities. And again, all those things will affect the banking system and, and uh, civil unrest because when people can't get their food or they can't get their money out of the ATM, there's likely to be some problems, basically. Now, the, with electrical things, the electrical power outages have... One concern is these big transformers, and some of them are really large. They're very, very expensive, and they don't keep a lot of spares around, if they keep any. And they can be responsible for electricity in a huge area. So if we did get a solar flare or a, um electromagnetic pulse from a weapon or something, that they could launch a weapon out of a container ship and shoot it over the east coast of the United States and get up there about 50, 60 miles or whatever, and however, blast out the city's electronic system or whatever. So it's, there's some things like that, the wild card things that we might want to think about, but they don't have to be at the top of the list. Transportation, for example, alternative modes, for example, keeping gas around, you know, if you have like an ATV, I mean, even if you have a horse or some other way to get around, Maybe one of those new kind of things with the six wheels or gators, they get them to call them. You can drive around your property. So being able to go on rougher roads by having a, several different kinds of vehicles is a good thing. Um, having some machinery like tractors. If you know a neighborhood, like I have a neighbor who's got a, a bulldozer and a big backhoe, so he can he can make a road if they, if they get blocked. But, um <clears throat> There are people out of the countryside who have really serious equipment, big, huge machines and, you know, big, huge hauling truck, hauling machines and tow trucks and things that can move something out of the way and pump water out of a road or something. So <clears throat> where you live, I recommend living a little bit on the edge of the city. If you, you know, so if, the, if there's a problem in the center of a big city and you're living in the outskirts of the city, well, you're you're going to be one of the first ones to be able to get out. You see, that's the way, like sitting next to the exit, uh, the emergency door on a plane. Well, you know, if everything, 
if something really happened at least i'm right next to this door here but you know it's kind of a last last chance option but in the countryside there's a lot more roads and you can go a lot of different directions and if you know if you have a good map see there's another thing equipment i really recommend people have real maps of the area including topographic maps and water lights things to do fire you can have a bunch of lighters matches propane all the different kinds of things that in the pinch you can really use like even those cans of uh propane that they use for stoves i mean you can power a pretty nice lantern with one of those and you can cook some serious meals with one of those little cook camp stoves <clears throat> So I have one of those camp stoves and some extra propane and hey, if electricity went off of my place where I have electric stove, I mean, I'll cook. I'll find somewhere to cook, even if it's raining outside. I'll bring that little propane thing in the barn and set it up and I'll, I'll make myself some, some food. Extra food, uh, fresh food, your medicines, things like that. It's really good to have these kind of things around. Now, the overall trend line, again, the banking system, this is a really serious issue, and, and I don't want to get into it too much here, but the world banking system is, I mean, you follow the money, right? You go up and up and up, and you follow the money, you find out there's this thing called the Bank of International Settlements. And it's in Europe, and it has some secret members, and they're immune from everything. I mean, they're literally immune from everything. You can't arrest them, do anything. They just control the money. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that, so... The banking system is a cascading system of the big banks, the ultimate banks, the secret banks, and then they own the banks, the little more banks, and then the little, little banks that you go down in your local town. That little bank is probably owned by some big fish up the road somewhere up, up the way up to the Rothschild or something. <clears throat> and there's there's banking system, banking industries that really own a whole country. They can own a whole military. They you know, you want to pay your military mercenaries some money, then you better talk to that bank. <laughs> so if you have a lot of gold and you want to store it somewhere, you got to talk to the right people. <laughs> so that's a really serious problem. And, you know, I can't tell people what to do about it, but the idea of having a little bit of cash around really wouldn't hurt. And maybe some other things of value, because ultimately... Let's say you have some gold or whatever and some cash, but then you go down to the store and they won't accept your gold and they can't open the register. If you have something of value that you can sell, like some skill or some tools or some some food or maybe you know have hay or eggs or something, so it helps to have something to barter with, because ultimately in a in a major situation. We're all going to be somewhat dependent on each other to help us out, you know, because nobody has everything. You know, there's medical people and there's construction people and, you know, happy people getting along with each other can really mitigate a lot of disasters. And I think that's one of the problems we have, a division that's happening. And don't get into that, please. We can't, we don't have uh, the luxury of being divided here in, in the current situation that's going on. And... Censorship, very, very important. You got to look for information about your health and about housing and about all terms and things that you need and food supplies and tools that you might need and get reviews of equipment and how to deal with septic and all the information that you need. Censorship, if the internet goes down and the very possibility, there's a lot of reasons why it could go down. But the censorship still happens and then you can't get information and you try to search on Google for something and they won't, you know, you know how Google is. So, again, books, having really good books, how-to books. I mean, I've got books and uh, how to raise goats, chickens, sheep, horses, dogs, how to grow food, wild food life, <clears throat> you know, wildlife food that's around here, kind of plants you can eat or not eat, and mushrooms. How to skin a deer, how to do this and that, how to shoot a gun, how to hunt. <clears throat> All those skills are really, really important. In Virginia, where I live, there's a lot of areas in the country still, that, but this is an area that was colonized, and there was a mix of people here and a lot of natives too, and they all had to live off the land. When when they came here, they literally had nothing, no houses, no structures, no nothing. They, 
if you want to live somewhere you just got to make a house and chop down some trees that's how that's how it was our modern society we can't conceive of that kind of life but literally people had to literally cut down enormous trees and then build the most rustic of all kind of places with the logs from these trees and then clear some land with a whole lot of hard work and mules and rope and chains and everything and then finally get some food growing there and thank goodness now there's a whole lot of land that's cleared out there now and, and it's ready to, to use for crops and you can plant a whole lot of stuff really close together and there, you know if it really gets down to it you don't need a whole lot of food I mean honestly we have to admit most of us eat way more than we really need to eat in this culture in America in many parts of the world you see people they obviously eat way more than they need I mean <clears throat> so it's easier to manage that if you have less demands if you don't need huge foods I mean if you really have an urgent situation like a power as you you probably weren't going to be making that seven course meal <laughs> you know you just get the basics and feed yourself and, and your family and so on so the trend lines I make jokes about sometimes I kind of laugh a little bit about having some humor about our situation here but there's a lot of really serious possibilities and I don't want to be alarmist I get accused of that being alarmist sometimes and I don't really want to have that be my reputation but I like to tell people the truth that if I discover something very important that's interesting and might affect their lives then I want to um, make sure I do my part and tell people because um, I would be amiss if I didn't tell people what I learned and there's ways of taking care of your health and so on that can really extend your life I mean think about it if you something that you there's people out there like me helping and teaching and learning and I learn and listen from lots of different things about bushcrafting and <clears throat> all kinds of stuff those things that we teach each other can really in many cases save a life or not permanently save a life they live forever of course but make it a few more years at least so I try to make these videos short and entertaining and I appreciate feedback if you find anything I say interesting or viable please like and share I talk a lot about ancient mysteries and esoteric teachings in my other videos and one of the reasons I do that is because if we look back through history there's been many 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 times when serious global or highly regional major catastrophes have happened <clears throat> okay so there's tons and tons of stories about it so because there were people that survived those kind of situations we are here I mean we have to think about it. our ancestors survived some pretty heavy stuff no matter what color or race we are I mean <clears throat> in the long history of human beings there's been a lot of travel around the world and ships and boats and walking and everything you know so we're all just human beings on this planet and you look at the ancient cultures some of the ones that survived some of the biggest catastrophes they went up on the hills I mean they were living up on the hills and the flood came and they were still living up on the hills and a lot less people on the world but they were living up in the hills way up there so I'm not suggesting people should move to Colorado or up in the high mountains actually I think that's kind of a uh, a less de desirable place if it's too rugged and too steep because then it becomes some get some serious issues and you don't have as many support facilities <clears throat> if there was a really huge regional power outage for example okay at night it would be crazy I mean you'd have cars and trucks and whatever it could run and lights and different kinds of generators running or whatever if it went on for a long time then you people would kind of get a system going on they'd set up their solar and all that but there would have to be a, a huge reduction in the amount of electricity that we use and you know 
if I look around my house, and I'm sure there's at least a hundred things plugged in. <laughs> so if I reduced it to five, I might have to do that if it really came down to it. But a water supply, there's many parts of the country that still have beautiful streams. I have a stream nearby, and I've drank right out of the stream at times, but sometimes I get water out of there, and I just run it through a Brita filter, and beautiful tasting, clean water right out of the stream. No fluoride, no um, no problems. So, also band together, I really think that communication and sharing information, because being proactive, being conscious, being prepped. I mean, all the professionals who do rescue, the police, the doctors, the, the, if they see a huge, huge storm coming, they go, okay, get everybody get ready here, get the trucks ready to fix the wires, get the fire trucks ready, get the police ready, get everybody ready. These people are already conscious, airline pilots and so on. These people are really on the ball, and thank goodness, because they're keeping their eye out for things, and there's, there's issues with the planet. I'll get into another video but the, the planet has a wobble there's actually a part a department a department of earth wobble i think it was but anyway some organization that scientifically keeps track of this slight wobble our earth has the precession of the equinoxes and it goes back in a but it also has a very very slight wiggle wobble and it affects the seas and the waves and things like that so there's some really fascinating things about the Earth that a lot of people don't think about. For example, the Earth's magnetic field is shifting in the North Pole. The North Magnetic Pole, not the physical pole, has been moving and moving and moving and also lessening in effect. So now the, the physical, the magnetic North Pole is way over there in Russia somewhere, I believe. And then the South Pole is also moving. And then there's times on Earth when the magnetic pole gets so out of a line with the physical pole that you know, kind of like electric circuit, it does a, a shift or something, and that would affect all our navigation instruments and magnets and everything. Oh, man, it would be a mess. So I don't want to make people afraid or anything, but on a smaller scale, just be conscious and be ready and, and make this that area around you bigger. I mean, think about farther around you. Like, that, if something really happened, it might affect 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 miles away from you. And, you know, a hurricane, someone probably tries to get out of the Louisiana area, area during a hurricane, and they might have to drive 200, 300 miles to get really far inland. So think about all that. So thanks again for listening, and appreciate it. And I'll be making a lot more videos this year. I have a new camera, and I'm going to set it up a little differently here. But I want to make them easy to produce and casual, and I wear, I don't always wear a camo outfit. I'm not a hunter, but kind of like blending in a little bit. And uh, thanks again for listening, and I'll speak to you in another video. Thanks.